Welcome to the 11th video of the MTCNA Routers version 7 playlist, where we will be specifically looking at the IP services options on your Microtik devices. What is an IP service list? What does it actually do? And how can we tweak or tune things in order to either maybe restrict access on our Microtik or to just change how you can do certain things on your Microtik? So let's jump into the video and learn a little bit more about IP services. So did you know at this very moment, your marketing could potentially be open as an FTP server to the internet or other devices on the network? How scary and crazy is that? Well, it shouldn't actually be too crazy and scary because marketing by default allows FTP connections to it. It runs us in an IP service on the Microtik, it listens on the FTP ports, and it can be very useful in order to maybe upload some packages to the Microtik, or maybe even to download some packages from your Microtik, use it as a type of hosting facility in order, if you want to use some type of central location to store all your packages. Your Microtik, if it has the disk space for it, it could definitely do that. So let me just show you. If I go on to my file explorer, I could actually just type in uh, FTP, whack whack, and then my Marketix IP, which is 192.168.88.1. And let's see, there we go. It prompts me for a username and password. So let me type in my Marketix username and password quickly. And the moment I've logged in, there we go. I've got access to my Marketix. There's some of the exports that I did in a previous video, my configuration backup. All of this stuff is here, which is really, really neat. But that can also potentially pose a bit of a security vulnerability, especially if you're not aware of this. So let me show you where you can find out what your marketing is actually doing right now. Because besides the FTP, Winbox that we use to connect is an IP service on your marketing device. SSH, Telnet, Webfig that you use via your browser, even stuff like the API things that people use in order to connect or collect information on the marketing that is also defined as an IP service on the Marketik. The Marketik is listening to those ports. It's a service that's actually or actively running on the Marketik. What does it mean? It means if you type in the Marketik's IP and you use that specific port, it's going to use whatever application is associated with that port. Now let's find out what services are currently running just by navigating into our IP and then services field. So I can go IP services. And there we go, there we get a big pop-up telling us exactly what our marketing is currently doing. So here we can see it is doing some API stuff, FTP is enabled by default, SSH and Telnet is enabled by default, Winbox as well as our Webfig. Now Marketic has done a few cool things with their IP services. You could actually access this from a separate VRF, maybe you could create something like a management VRF and put all of these services inside of the management VRF. But the scope of the MTCNA doesn't cover stuff like VRF, so don't worry too much about anything like that. The main thing that you need to understand is that we do have these services running on the Marketik and that we can potentially just disable them if we don't require them, or we could even restrict access where you can connect to these services from. So what do I mean by that? If we have a look, there's this available from field that we can specify some details in. So maybe I want to restrict access on SSH connections. So if I double click on the SSH item, it will open up another box. And then inside the available from button, I can click on the plus and now I can specify an IP subnet. I could specify a single host or I could specify a whole network. It's up to me to define what I want to allow access on SSH. So I could put in my own range, my management range in this case, which is 192.168.88.0/24. And when I click on apply, what this means is only devices that's originating from the 192.168.88.0/24 subnet will be able to connect to this Microtik via SSH. This is very useful because this means if people from the internet were trying to access my Microtik over the internet itself, it would immediately fail if, if I didn't have any firewall rules that's already blocking that by default. But let's say that the firewall rules weren't there, at least this would be an additional measure of security. So now we're restricting access from a specific subnet. Now, if we wanted to introduce additional IPs, it's as easy as just going back into the object, clicking on the plus, and then you can specify as many different networks or hosts as you want to be able to access this Microtik via SSH. And the same can be said for Winbox, or Telnet, 
or Webfig or any of those other services. Now, it's very important that you maybe disable certain services on the Microtik if you don't want it to be potentially vulnerable on the internet itself. What do I mean by that? Definitely like the FTP service, like I just showcased, if this is just broadcasting on the internet or the wireless networks and somebody is able to see this and connect, then they might be able to get onto your Microtik and do some very funky stuff. So if you want to disable a service, it's actually as easy as just clicking on it and then you can click on this disable button or you can just double click on the object, untick the enabled, click OK, and that will just gray out that service. So now FTP is disabled. So if I do the same thing, I go back into my file explorer. Um, let's just close that, open it up again. If I type in FTP, it, it just doesn't work now. It's failing because I've turned off the IP service on the Microtik itself. And I would actually highly recommend that you disable any service that you don't require and only try and use secure services. So in my opinion, what I tend to do is I will typically disable stuff like Telnet. I'll disable the www, the WebPig stuff, because I don't use WebPig to configure the devices. I'm either using Winbox or I'm using SSH. So I'll leave on SSH, I'll leave on Winbox. And I know since I don't use the API, I could also just hold in control, select both items, disable them. And now my Microtik has only been set up to allow access via SSH or Winbox connections. Let's also just maybe secure my Winbox by double clicking back onto it and adding the available from address as my management range so that I can only access it from this range. Again, this is very important. If you are trying to access the device outside of this range, then this will immediately also lock you out of the device. So be very careful when you work with stuff like available from, because this is in essence a firewall rule that you're really working with. You're restricting access on this specific protocol or port to your Microtik. So that is basically it. That is really a crash course in what IP services is. Again, I just want you to think of this as services that's running on the Microtik itself. And you as an administrator can define exactly what you want IP services to do. Oh, there's one more cool thing that I want to show you with the IP services. You can also change the ports so that if maybe you wanted to port forward SSH to something else inside your network, you could change the port of the protocol itself. It's also actually kind of like best practice to do for security measures. So let's say instead of leaving SSH as 22, we could maybe make it 2202 or something. So if I click on OK, it will save that port now as 2202. And if I want to access the Microtik via an SSH client, so let's quickly just use PuTTY as an example. So if I go into PuTTY, I can type in my Microtik's IP, so 192.168.88.1. And the port I will now have to specify is 2202. If I connect using just plain 22, it is going to fail. So let's connect using 2202, just to make sure it is actually working. And there we can see I can access the Microtik via SSH. How cool is that? So that is basically it. That is IP services in a nutshell. This is actually a very straightforward video, I hope. Um, might be a little bit short, but it's good. This shouldn't be a long and tedious session. So I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll catch you in the next MTCNA video. See ya.